Find the interval of convergence of the power series from one to infinity, alternating sign, negative one to the n plus one, x minus five to the n, and that's all divided by five to the n and the cube root of it. So we have to use the ratio test. Now normally the ratio test has division of successive terms, but it really is too much to write this. They really don't want you to have to then divide and multiply by the reciprocal and then mix up all the terms. There's an easier way to do it. And here's what we do. We take the individual terms where they're at, numerator versus denominator, and replace the ends with n plus one, giving each term its own fraction. And so we'd have, instead of five to the n, we'd have five to the n plus one in the denominator of a fraction. Instead of cube root of n, we have cube root of n plus one in the denominator of a different fraction. In the numerator of a third fraction, we're gonna have negative one to the n plus two, because it would be n plus one plus another one. And then we have x minus five to the n plus one. Now, when you multiply by the reciprocal in the denominator there of the a sub n terms, what ends up happening is that in these gaps, in these fractions, we put the corresponding term from the a sub n. So above the five to the n plus one, we put the five to the n. Above the cube root of n plus one, we put the cube root of n. Below the negative one to the n plus two, we put the negative one to the n plus one. And below the x minus five to the n plus one, we put the x minus five to the n. And we handle each of these fractions separately when we look at the limit. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to take these exponents from the n plus 1 terms and break them apart. And so we take 5 to the n plus 1 and make it 5 to the n times 5. We take negative 1 to the n plus 2 and make it negative 1 to the n plus 1 times negative 1 to the 1. Take x minus 5 to the n plus 1 as x minus 5 to the n times x minus five. The reason why we do this is so that we can cancel. The five to the n's would cancel, the negative one to the n plus one's would cancel, the x minus five to the n's will cancel. When it comes time for this fraction that is second here, we think about what happens as n gets large, it's just gonna go to one. If the cube root of n divided by the cube root of n plus one, the plus one won't matter as n gets big, and they're essentially the same. And so it goes to one. Great. So now what? Well, we look at each fraction and see what's left. We have a, a, a five in the denominator, a one, a negative one, and an x minus five. We can drop the limit now because there are no longer uh, ends. And so we have simply one fifth times the absolute value of x minus five. You see, because we're in absolute value, all this guy multiplies, all these three multiply to give you negative one-fifth, and then we can pull that out. The absolute value of A times B is the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B, and so the negative one-fifth can be um, brought out as a one-fifth, and then we have X minus five. Okay, now why are we doing this? Well, we want convergence, and we're using the ratio test. So what do we need? The result of this limit needs to be less than one for convergence. And that gives us an inequality to solve. But we don't have any more room on this slide. Let's go to the next slide. So we have the original question, we have the inequality, and now we're going to solve it by multiplying both sides by five. That'll get you the absolute value less than five. And then, when you have the absolute value less than some number, what it means is that what's inside the absolute value is in between the positive and the negative version of that number. Our job is to get what x is in between, so we just add five to everywhere. And we get the following that x is between 0 and 10. Well, now it's our job to check the endpoints. Let's look at what happens at x equals 0. Replace the x in your series with a 0. 
Well, then we'll have a negative 5 to the n. Now, what's going to happen is if we break apart this negative 1 to the n plus 1, these three terms here basically cancel each other out. You can think about it as just everything being written to the nth power. We have this 5 in the numerator, the 5 in the denominator, they're both to the n, they just cancel out. So we're looking at this series now of the negative 1, we can pull it outside. And so we're looking at simply 1 over n to the 1 third, which we can tell quickly diverges because it's a p series with p equals 1 third, which is less than 1. So that part is solved. It does. Um, it diverges at zero. So now let's look at the other endpoint, ten. Replace x by ten in your series. This time we get a five to the n. And now when we put these together, we'll end up with the five to the n's cancel each other out. And now we have the alternating n to the one third in the denominator. And that's going to converge. Technically, it converges conditionally, but they don't ask us what level of convergence. And so uh, it converges, and we can just say the alternating series test. Okay. You don't have to actually go into the particulars of it. That's fine at this point. That's not what this question is testing. So, divergent on the left, convergent on the right. We can use an equals to, or we can use a square bracket. And that is our answer.